Hi, Jewish mom. So I hope I hope you had an amazing Rosh Hashanah. Um, and I want to tell you about one of the highlights of my Rosh Hashanah. Um, and um, it was very unusual, not what you're thinking it would have been. And it was nothing that happened in shul or involving a shofar or involving tshuva or involving anything like that. And um, basically, we had a guest, um, a really, really um, exceptional young woman um, who, um, who is a recent convert. Um, she, um, she, she grew up, um, in a, um, in a certain African country, and in order to protect her privacy, I'm going to not, not, not specify which, which African country I'm talking about, um, but she grew up in one of those, one of the, one, um, in a, in a terrible African country, um, where, uh, where basically there's tremendous, um, natural resources, um, so that the, so that the corrupt dictator, um, is a, um, he's a billionaire, but there's 90% unemployment, um, and the people live in terrible poverty. There's four million people people in danger of you know dying of starvation living in this country, um, and um, and just meeting this young woman and just seeing like what a lovely lovely person, also very intelligent and very poised with remarkable chen, like a remarkable special loveliness about her, and also positivity. And I'm, and I'm not saying I don't think everyone from her country is like her. She's really a gem. Uh, she is something special. Um, but, um, but, just, but just seeing like the human resources available in this country and because of this terrible dictatorship, then, uh, then it's like the country can't function. There is basically, um, there's no school, like uh, she said, she's a, she, she's, like, she's a teacher in her, in her country. Um, but um, but there but the people um, but be, but because because the government is so corrupt and this ninety percent unemployment because of the terrible government, um, people can't afford the schools, which are actually quite good. She said, um, and um, even the public schooling costs money. People can't afford like the last like the little bit it costs to go to the public schools. So whatever in general, like a terrible story, and uh, so my um, so my so my children were blown away. My children were completely enthralled. So a Rosh Hashanah second day lunch, we basically spent, you know, half an hour just finding out about this country and all the things going wrong. And my kids were saying, well, why can't you, why can't you, uh, why can't they have an election and kick this guy out? And then she's explaining, you know, what life is like when there's not a democracy. Um, and my kids were just trying to figure out this way and that way and how they can possibly fix this terrible situation. Um, and um, and really just over and over, she was explaining why the situation in her country, um, barring some sort of revolution, but she was saying, well, even if there's a revolution, like, who knows, maybe something even worse would come in and then, you know, there'd be a war and then more people would die. Just every, every, every suggestion my kids had to save the situation of this, of this, of you know, this very tragic situation in this country, um, she was just explaining why it wasn't, why, 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 why it seemed as though it wasn't going to work, um, that that the situation was quite hopeless. Okay, so I'm telling you about this because then a few hours later we had another really interesting guest. Um, we had a guest <coughs> who's a guy who's a Balchuma, um, who um, who now he's learning in yeshiva. Um, but before he was working in yeshiva, he was working in public health um, in African countries. Um, he was working for the U.S. State Department, um, and this U.S. State Department has they have a um, they have a department for helping I think developing countries um, with public health. So he was and so he was telling my kids about how he went to this country and that country. He was in Malawi and Moz Mozambique and Kenya, basically explaining to the doctors he worked a lot with HIV and helping with uh, and helping basically and um, helping the doctors there um, uh, treat HIV more effectively um, and uh, and helping also and um, treating children how to treat kids more effectively it was very rewarding it was very rewarding and explaining so my daughter one of my daughters got very that my daughter who had been the most heartbroken by the story at lunch was already very very worked up about how she was going to go and work um, in Africa whatever I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, mean, meanwhile, she has to finish high school. Um, but um, uh, but she um, oh, but the thing is that is that you know if you look at the situation, the reason I'm talking about this is because you know like what he's doing. It's true. You know he's going from this country, that country, meeting. You know going this clinic, that clinic, speaking with this doctor, that doctor, this person that this this, this new Balshuva that we met. Um, but the truth is, what he's doing is really a drop in the bucket. 
it's just it's it's a very very verse you know uh, when 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 you look at the you when you look at how many hundreds of millions of people in Africa or in all the developing countries in the world like how much they are suffering from so many different problems from unemployment and civil war and HIV and then the orphans left over from HIV and the situation you can get is it seems seems quite hopeless, you know, for Africa and for so many developing countries in the world. But you look at this person and much, it was very, very heartening to see this person who decided, okay, I'm going to do my thing. And I'm not, I know I can't, I can't solve the problems of the entire world. I can't. But, you know, for this one clinic in Mozambique, for this one clinic in Malawi, I can help. I can teach that doctor how to treat his 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 young patients more effectively. I I can do this. This little thing like that African child, I can make a difference. Okay, um. So um. So I was thinking about this this morning. I was listening to a wonderful class on the Chazak Hotline by Rabbi Zeb Smith, and he gave a beautiful mashal, a beautiful story, a beautiful met metaphor about tshuva. Um, so I think that like when we hear tshuva, we hear about tshuva, we hear about doing tshuva, like I at least I get kind of like overwhelmed. I'm like, I'm like, like, okay, like I'm already working so hard to do what I'm doing and then I'm supposed to really, really, it feels kind of depressing and uh, like how am I really, really, really going to change myself? Um, as much, as much, as much as I would like to. How how can I how can I make a kavala la teed? How can I how can I say okay? I'm um, like let's say let's say let's say my problem is that I you know that I yell at my children. So that how can I make then the kavala teed that I'm not that I'm not going to yell at my children anymore? And what Rabbi Zev Smith explained, and I I wanted to share this with you because I think probably a lot of people have have this mis misconception about what tshuva means. Um, he said, he said basically the tshuva, it's not, it's, it's the tshuva, tshuva is just taking that first step. It's just taking that first step to change what needs to be changing. For example, for example, um, about, 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 about yelling at my children, um, it might be, actually I just started today, this is not exactly related to that, but, but, um, but I decided this year that I want to be a better parent to my teenager, to my, to my teenagers. I have Three and a half teenagers. One of my daughters is twelve, so she's I think is a is a, is a half. Um, so I have three I have three and a half teenage daughters, and I don't really know. I've taken many parenting classes, but specifically how to deal with teenagers, I don't really know. Um, so uh, so I decided every day, five minutes. I'm gonna read the Faber and Faber and Maslish book, Faber and Maslish book, um, about um about about how how to how to talk. Um, how to talk so teenagers will listen, like one of their series. Um, and uh, so I started my first five minutes a day trying to figure out how to communicate more, effective, more effectively with my teenagers and not just say, you know, uh, dear husband, could you please deal with struggling teenager? I don't really know how to, I don't really know how to communicate with her regarding this issue. Okay, so um, so just five minutes. It doesn't mean that I've solved the problem. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be immediately like tshuva. Not doesn't mean I'm going to be the most amazing, amazing mother to my teenagers. But it does mean I've taken that step. So Rabbi Zeb Smith in the Chazak Hotline, beautiful, beautiful class by the way. If you call the Chazak Hotline, um, worth listening to. I think it's so you you press a, 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 a what do you call it? A sulamit. 12, like I think number sign 42 after you get to the main menu. So what, so what he said is, um, he said, he, he said, imagine someone who's come from a, who's come from, who's come from a, uh, from a developing country. Back, I guess, to our, oh, it reminded me of <laughs> my other story. Imagine someone's come from a developing country to New York City. That person's in New York City. And they're looking up at the huge, huge buildings, the huge, huge skyscrapers, feeling completely overwhelmed. And there's some sort of special exhibit going on um, on the um, on the top, top floor of one of these skyscrapers. It's over a hundred stories tall. Um, and um, uh, and so and so this so this you know this person this kind of new person in New York and he's like overwhelmed by this hundred story building and he says and he he and he's asking for at the information desk he said he said I'm supposed to get up to like you know the hundred and fiftieth floor but how how can I possibly do that do that if I if I take stairs it's just so far how can I possibly do it and he felt so overwhelmed. And so hopeless, like there's no way he will ever reach this exhibit that this exhibit he's supposed to get to. And then the person in information says, says, "Don't worry, there is an elevator. We have an we have this thing called an elevator, and it will help you get up to the 150th floor." So this person he goes and he stands there by the elevator, 
just standing and standing and standing and 10 minutes pass and 20 minutes pass and half an hour and an hour, nothing's happening. And he's becoming more and more despondent. You know, I'm never going to get up to the hundred. I'm never going to get to the 150th floor. I'm never going to. Um, and, um, and then the, um, uh, and so then the person said so he goes back to the person at the information desk. He says, "I know you. I know you told me about the this elevator, but like it's not. You know, it's not working. It's not working for me." The person said, "There's a thing called a button. You need to push the button." So he pushed the button. The elevator came, and he, before he knew it, he was soaring up to the hundred fiftieth floor. And that's the way that, that and that's the way that tshuva works. That all all that all that we need to do, all that we're expected to do, is to make is to take this little turn in our lives, to make this this one step, to push the button, to take that you know that five minutes reading the parenting book every day, you know, do, doing just like taking upon something ourselves to turn to make a slight turn in our lives to make a difference. Um, and, um, and it's not, it's not, it's not to, not to necessarily like, we, we can easily put a lot of pressure on ourselves and think, think, you know, but I'm still going to yell at my children. I'm still going to do this wrong and that wrong. And, but you know, the point is really just to the elevators right there. You got to get the 150th floor, press the button. That's our responsibility is to, t is to just to press the button. So in conclusion, um, so I shared a story about about uh, about this lovely young woman we met from a really incredibly messed up African country, um, and uh, and after after we after we had the meal with her, we were feeling so hopeless about the situation in this country and so many countries in the developing world, um, and um, and then a few hours later, we hosted another person who actually worked. In, who actually worked in public health in African countries, um, and he kind of showed us, like on a very small, almost microscopic level, he was going to make he, he was helping to make a difference, um, and, um, uh, and 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 and, and it, it reminded me it reminded me of tshuva it reminded me of that of just taking that small small step of you know of the elevator you know the person who needs to learn to press the button right you don't have to climb up the hundred fifty the hundred fifty stairs yourself you just gotta press the button do that small thing that small thing which it would show us hashem i am taking the first step okay and on the note i want to bless all of you jewish moms with uh, with a gemar chatima tova and a shana tova